Hello, I'm Matthew Dukes from WFO Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and today I'll be presenting some ways of using probabilistic information in messaging products for a heavy snow and mixed precipitation event. Throughout this presentation, I'll step through each of the four stages of the messaging strategy to show examples of how to use probabilistic information in weather stories, social media posts, situation reports, and webinars. All of these examples will be focused on a large synoptic winter storm that produced heavy snow as well as multiple weather types back in April of 2019. So let's start by talking a little bit about what made this event so challenging to forecast and to message. From an extended period of time, forecasters had a clear picture that this storm was likely to produce high impacts across a large portion of the central United States. In fact, this storm brought with it several forecast concerns. While our confidence was elevated from the onset that we'd be impacted, there were considerable uncertainties regarding the track of the storm itself. This meant that the forecast was continually evolving and specifics at any one location could frequently shift on a model run-to-run -run basis. The one thing that we were more confident in at an early stage was the potential for historic snowmelts that were going to be associated with some pretty strong winds. However, these forecast challenges also created significant messaging headaches. We face many of the same challenges that others do in these events. How do you balance messaging areas of the forecast where your confidence is higher, like say in snowfall, to the lower confidence levels of other aspects such as mixed precipitation? Snowfall amounts were expected to be near historic levels, but model spread could still lead to high variance in snow totals at any one location as the storm grew closer. Finally, how do you message the rapid changes that the storm could bring to an area along with the high impact conditions possible? So as you can see, there were more than just a few concerns with this event. Over the upcoming slides, we'll take a look at how we'd apply a probabilistic messaging approach to this event by using new graphical displays within our weather stories, sit reps, and webinars. We'll also show you ways how you can enhance your local messaging for events that may be similar. We'll start with the first stage of messaging. That's called the outlook phase. Generally at this stage, your forecast confidence is pretty low at less than 30%. It's a stage in time where we are starting to see signals for impactful weather and really want to start hinting at the possibility that it could happen. The phrases in your messages should echo your confidence level. Avoid using certainty terms such as will or expect, and instead use such terms as possible or may. So while each event is different, for synoptically driven storms, you may be able to begin messaging these events as far as three to seven days in advance. This time scale could be compressed in mesoscale driven mixed precipitation events. So in our April event, we were able to produce images much further out because of the relative size of the system and potential for impacts. So what are the ways you can start advertising events when your confidence begins to rise? One example of an image available to use to show probabilities of occurrence are maps provided by WPC. Or, well, if these maps are not available at the time, you could hand draw an outline area on a map where you are most concerned about drawing attention to the storm. When it comes to the details in the message you want to send, you'll have to remember that the goal of the outlook stage isn't to provide exact forecast details. The goal is to plant the seed that an impactful event is incoming and you really want to get your audience's attention. So as you can see from our graphics, it's okay to say what you know and what's still uncertain while presenting an action for that reader to take. If you'd rather not use a map at this point, an alternative method is to produce a plain text weather story graphic or social media post. You can use this method to stress what we know, what's still unknown, and continue the process of planting the seed and urging folks to begin monitoring. So as your confidence begins to grow in both storm occurrence and even in some aspects of the forecast, the next stage in the communication process will be one where you continue providing an outlook and you may even begin increasing your IDSS services. We'll call this the continued outlook stage. Now typically confidence in this stage ranges anywhere from 30 to 50 percent, which can take place in a synoptically driven system within the three to four day time frame. Again, it's important to remember that your messaging should be driven by your confidence level and not directly tied to the storm timeline. That said, by the time you've reached this stage of communications, your storm predictability has increased, 
but those individual forecast specifics like precipitation type, location, timing, and even amounts may remain hazy. Going back to our April case, forecast confidence was increasing that we were going to have an historic storm in some areas. However, the signals for a messy forecast were still present and confidence in both track and precipitation types remain lower. This is a good place, however, to begin setting the stage when it comes to your expectations of the storm. Depending on your forecast confidence, utilize potential maps to set the snowfall floor for your event. If your confidence is closer to 30%, then forego showing individual probabilities. However, if your confidence is at the 50% range, then you can include percentages to show more additional confidence in your forecast. You could choose to use low, medium, high phrasing within the potential maps, like shown here, or you could utilize the traditional blue gradient color scale in your imagery. But at this stage, it's important to begin changing the tone of your message. And this is especially true as confidence approaches 50%. You can begin using terms such as expected in your graphics and products as your confidence grows. And most importantly, urge your audience to continue monitoring and also start preparing. There are also other ways to show potential in a snowfall forecast. You could also use an alternative chart display for your potential maps, where you can highlight select or highly populated locations in your forecast area. While broad scale maps can help show potential over a larger area, these individual profiles can expand on that potential locally. These kind of maps can be useful in individual partner briefings or even in your sit reps as supplemental information. Moving towards the watch phase of messaging means you're now in a forecast confidence position to stress that this event is going to happen. Predictability is now high, but there are still some elements that remain uncertain. Again, your collaborative confidence will determine when you enter the stage of communications, but in many synoptically driven systems, this will take place between one and three days out. At this stage, you may have or you may be issuing watches in this time frame. You're likely issuing sit reps and even holding introductory webinars. Probabilistic information can really help support these hazard products. So as you can see from this example image, you'll also want to begin really stressing your risks and the expected impacts from those risks. This is the stage where you may begin introducing more specific forecast products such as snowfall maps. Now these snowfall maps can utilize the 25th and 75th percentiles or the 10th and 90th percentile snowfall totals as you've collaborated. Also, as you can see from this image, in some locations, percentile values can still show considerable spread. We also had the difficulty of messaging where there was still uncertainty in that precipitation type. As we did in our imaging, you could also hand draw where your greatest precipitation uncertainty may fall. So how do you message the significant spread of snowfall totals within an event? Even though some of your products may be trending towards deterministic views, you can still use probabilistic data sets to stress the remaining uncertainties and why those ranges may exist. In our April event, confidence on historic snow was high, but we needed to continue messaging uncertainties regarding mixed precipitation, potential icing, and those impacts on the forecast. This April event provided a great opportunity to utilize scenarios in our weather stories and sit reps. In this event, we discussed how the snowfall totals at one location could change using the probabilistic snowfall percentile maps, and then we could relate those maps to scenarios people could understand. Probabilistic information doesn't always have to be limited to just snowfall. In this event, our forecast confidence was pretty high that we were also going to have high winds with this storm system. Utilizing the model certainty tool in AWIPS, we were able to highlight the potential for strong winds and message the impacts those winds could bring to our area from this storm. Your sit rips can also serve as a good venue to use probabilistic information within, especially as you are working to support your hazard products. This year, there are new tools that you will be able to use to advertise your event, including probabilistic box and whisker plots for selected cities across your forecast area. These box and whisker plots can serve as another good alternative to just showing raw snowfall maps. 
and can provide much needed context to the uncertainties in a snowfall forecast. It's important to note, though, that some of these tools may be more difficult to explain to the general public, and these graphics and images may need further explanation and education if you choose to use them. Now, should your forecast confidence continue to increase, you will reach the warning stage of messaging. In synoptically driven events, you may reach this confidence level anywhere from 12 hours to two days in advance. But again, every case can be different and your collaboration internally and with neighboring offices will really drive your message. So by this time, your products and messaging should fall in the form of more deterministic guidance, utilizing the 25th and 75th percentiles for your forecast snow maps and clearly advertising icing and or mixed precipitation risks. Within the messaging that you produce, the tone and words that you use are vital to express high confidence and prompt action from those hearing your message. If you are expecting a historic event or one that will produce extreme impacts, it's important to stress that information. But as you can see from the examples on this slide and in the examples within the slides ahead, you can still utilize additional probability and confidence tools to enhance and support the message you want to share within the warning stage of messaging. The NBM and ATRA provide two platforms that can provide additional context to your forecast. And if you're looking to visually convey forecast confidence in a webinar or in a graphic such as we're showing on these slides, a simple slider bar is a great tool to convey your unconfidence and uncertainty. So one of the greatest challenges with mixed precipitation events is conveying how those events will change with time and how an area could be impacted by those changes. One simple example to convey these changes with time can be created through the use of HREF precipitation type maps. Now if this method doesn't seem like it will convey your message, another tool you'll have available this winter season is the derived probability maps created from the probabilistic tool sets within GFE. While one image alone may only capture a snapshot in time, if you, if you thread 4, 8, or even 12 hours of these images together and create an animation, you can create a comprehensive view of how precipitation risk may change with time. Again, you can view an example of this type of mapping in the probabilistic testbed guidance document. Now this April event not only brought the challenge of mixed precipitation, it also brought the challenge and a risk of advertising and communicating high snowfall rates. But how do you message an event where conditions are expected to rapidly deteriorate? Well, one solution that we found useful for this event was utilizing probabilities of one inch per hour snowfall rates created from the HREF. Now used alone, these maps may be difficult to understand for the average user, which is why we will really want to try to add context, meaning what is expected to happen is important to describe, but the impacts of what is expected are even more important to stress. So as with any winter weather event, timing is one of the most important questions that commonly is asked by partners as well as members of the general public. So I wanted to show you two examples of a new tool available during this probabilistic test. These HER ensemble graphics available within the developmental WAVE platform may be too difficult for more broad messaging purposes. However, we can use the information they create, like the onset time of 30 mile per hour winds, or the onset time when any snowfall could begin, to supplement any other messaging you may want to create, or perhaps even to just answer any questions you may receive uh, publicly or from your partners. Finally, there may be times where you may need to provide specific forecast information for IDSS events in your area, or maybe you have some partners that have a higher demand for information. So going back to our April event, we can use probability charts for individual locations to break down an 18-hour forecast for precipitation types. So while the example chart I'm showing you in the image may not look exactly like the data that will be produced for our winter testbed, it can provide valuable context to the precipitation type risks expected during an incoming winter storm or winter weather event. You could even combine these probability charts with an overview map of the storm to put context to your forecast over a larger area. 
So as you've seen from the examples I've shown throughout this presentation, these large synoptic force systems can be advertised well in advance, but they can still produce significant messaging challenges. The good news is that through the use of probabilistic data sets, and when combined with a staged communication approach based on your forecast confidence level, you can help create a clear, concise, and collaborated messaging approach. But it is very important to remember that the production of maps and new graphic displays are just a part of the messaging approach. You'll always want to be sure the phrases and terms you use in your messages also match the confidence you wish to convey in your forecast. So once again, there are more examples of graphics, situation reports, and webinar slides available at the Central Region STI Google site. Feel free to email cr.probmessaging at noaa.gov with any questions. Thanks for watching.